when you're talking about young kids, you know, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, you know, most of them probably aren't going to be professional all-stars, you know, in the big leagues, but hopefully they can learn how to be all-stars in, in their, in their mental health and in their daily life. And just learning how to, you know, cope and, and, and just, uh, function with like the demands of daily life. You know, I think that's the beautiful thing about sports is it's, it really is kind of a metaphor for, for the rest of, you know, everything that goes on in your life is, you know, there's gonna be a tons of failure, but as long as you're learning from it and, you know, you can have a positive attitude and you're a good teammate or, you know, you're healthy in your relationships, healthy in your spiritual life, healthy um, in your thoughts, you know, that that's really, that's really what we're after. What's good, everybody? Welcome to 99 Miles Per Hour podcast with me, your host, Percy Garner. And, uh, you know, I got some some baseball. This is going to be a baseball episode, so I'm very excited. I get to talk to one of my old teammates. And uh, also, before we get to that, I would like to mention just one little, th- little nugget that I've been uh, working with lately, thanks to Chris Lane. Uh, he is. He gave me this book when we first met. I know Chris has been a long time, but I've been reading it. I'm almost done. I recommend you buy this book, um, it, or if you just don't want to buy it and you want to, you know, take a peek at it, you can hit me up in the comments, and I might send it to you if I like you. But it's uh, permission to screw up, and uh, basically just talking about all the things you know people get out and and do and attack, and then you get it wrong, but then you learn. Because a lot of people like me, before Josh kicked me in the butt and made me do this podcast. Um, I probably would have never done the podcast. So, you know, you just need to get out there, you know, mess some things up and then, then you'll learn. And that's how pretty much every entrepreneur learns and gets better at the game. Pretty sure my guest has messed up in his entrepreneurial <laughs> uh, avenues, uh, but we'll get into that. Uh, I also want to give a thanks to the great people at Peterman Plumbing and Heating. Uh, they sponsor this podcast, so they make it possible. Uh, we appreciate you guys over there. Haven't been over there in a little bit, so I'm going to have to come over there and mess with you guys in the office and uh, make a mess and eat all your candy. Uh, but we appreciate everything you guys do for us. And uh, if you guys ever need any renovations, uh, you have any issues with your heating and cooling, or uh, you know you just messed up your toilet, just give Peterman Plumbing a call. Uh, thank you guys once again. Now, I also want to celebrate the success that the Dogs Podcast is having. Even though y'all, I've only made a little short cameo on there. They're doing really well. They got 600, 1,600 subscribers right now. So go ahead and give them a follow and a subscribe. Like their latest uh, Browns news, even though you know I'm a Steelers guy. But uh, I appreciate the, the homegrown podcast here. So they're doing big things. Uh, continue up. You know, if you want, use their code. Get some Manscaped. You know, <laughs> clean yourself up, boys. Come on. <laughs> Anyways, let's get to the guests. So this next guest I got coming to the show today is a, a special guy from up north. Um, I met him once I get to the, once I got to the Indians organization. He was drafted by them in 2012 in the second round. Had a seven year career. I played with him in Akron. Uh, very strong guy. You'll see just you know his traps once you see the uh, <laughs> once you see uh, once he gets on the screen. Uh, but now he's uh, uh, post baseball, but he's still dealing with baseball and helping people and passing on the knowledge, paying it forward. He's the uh, the current owner of Velocity Baseball Training in Minnesota, and uh, you'll learn more about that. But thanks for coming by. We got Mitch Brown with us, man. How you doing? I'm doing great, man. Thanks for having me on. That's what's up. Uh, your voice doesn't sound that bad. You said you were losing a little bit because you're doing a lot of yelling. Yeah, it's like uh, partial like allergies and then partial I'm going through puberty and uh, my, my voice is just is changing. I'm a little subconscious about it. Um, but, you know, for real, I've just been running programs all summer and just hollering at the kids and, you know, just making sure they're doing things the right way. So that's what's yeah, up. We're, we're, we're working a little horse today, but we're going to get through it. Yeah, well, I appreciate it, you know, fighting through it and uh, coming on the show with me. I know I've seen some footage of what you guys are doing and it's a lot bigger than I thought. So I'm, I'm anxious to get to that. But before we will touch on a little bit but i figured I, i'd get right to the the uh, did you see the interview with uh garrett cole i did woof <laughs> oh that was tough man um yeah oh yeah I, yeah i mean i i, I kind of thought like he would have like prepared a little bit better for the, for the question i mean i, I, I mean, didn't know it was coming you know, 
Yeah, I didn't know. Of course, coming. now I'm in front of a camera and I'm going to make a, an absolute baboon of myself. But um, <laughs> I mean, that was that was tough. Yeah, well, Josh, he's good at editing. So if you mess up, we'll just good. take it out. <laughs> oh, thank you. I'm, I'm much better yeah. edited than I am unedited. <laughs> relieve, relieve. You're good. Yes, yes. Um, and despite me being in a church right now recording, you know, there's no, you can say whatever you want. <laughs> Well, we're both men of God, so yes, I, think, exactly. uh, I think we're going to be all right. <laughs> yeah, we should be good. But um, but yeah, I just, I saw that and, I, and, and I'm not an awkward person, but then I feel, you know, for other people when they're in awkward situations and I just, I can't take it. And him staring at the camera and just not speaking was really hard for me to sit and watch. And uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> it, was, it was bad, but I, I kind of want to ask you, because I know for me, I tried one time. Uh, I was in Reading uh, playing against, I think, the New Hampshire Fisher Cats. <laughs> and, uh, you know, Stroman had just pitched the day before. So I had to, you know, uh, get my stuff on. You know, Stroman was beasting out there. And uh, mm. my catcher, i um, not going to throw his name out there, but my catcher, you know, you could see he rubbed the, the ball on his glove, threw it back to me. And I felt a little pine tar on there, you know. So I was like, oh, let's see what this is about. Threw a curveball, nastiest curveball in the history of Percy Garner. But <laughs> I, had, I could not control that thing. It was gross, but I had no idea. So I was like, I can't do that. And it was right before a start. So, I mean, who's going to try something new right before their start? So I never kind of got into it. But I noticed throughout the league, in my experiences, a large portion of pitchers, you know, used, you know, and a lot of people just use uh, suntan lotion and, ro- and rosin, which is, I think is completely okay but then we start getting into different stuff like uh, spider tackle which i've never heard of but i don't want to yeah, get into i've never that. heard of that either i i was i i heard the word spider tackle i was like i mean is that what they're is that what they're i don't know you know is that what they're calling it like i don't know what that is but yeah I, honestly um i never even really liked rosin to be honest with you like for whatever reason like it just you know like my spin rate stuff was pretty average my breaking ball had like pretty good spin but yeah, I was the same way. Like, I just felt like I, I tried because everyone was trying and they're like, oh, dude, it's the it's it's the bee's knees, you know. But then, like, when I tried it, I I almost felt like I was just going to throw the ball into the ground because, exactly. like, I was holding on to it too long, you know. And it's just like, it's too much to think about. Yeah. You know, I just <laughs> I wasn't very good at it. I mean, you know, like like you said, I wish I would have I wish I would have been bet would have been better at it. Yeah. But yeah, the main thing that all the guys were using when I was playing with was just sunscreen and rosin. Yeah. You know? Yeah, now they're and that was that was plenty sticky enough for me, but yeah. Well, I, I supposedly I, I was watching the Pat McAfee show and he was showing that a weightlifter was holding like a fifty yard a fifty yard a fifty pound dumbbell with a spider tag, just like, <laughs> I was like well, yeah. I don't know if he was you know exaggerating, but you know, but it's it's right. it's, it's it's to me, I'm like, dang, that's that's pretty crazy. But well, you know, the bullpen in, in Akron um, was like the both bullpens were like back to back, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and like, sometimes like, you know, won't name any names, but you could literally hear the ball, like, whoosh, yeah. like getting off the fingers and you're like, dang dude, like what, is what that? you got? You know? man. Yeah. So yeah, I don't know. I'd never really dabbled with it much, but maybe I should. Yeah, I know. That's one thing I'm like, man, I think I said that on Twitter, like, man, I regret not, you know, using this advantage because <laughs> right. my spin rate was okay. I didn't, th- I never looked at spin rate because I threw a sinker. So I assumed my spin rate was right. dog trash, but, um, Apparently, when I, the Orioles signed me, that was one of the reasons. They're like, yeah, you have really good spin rate. I was like, oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Oh. Yeah. I guess I just assumed that, like, you know, if you were throwing a sinker, you would want less. Exactly. Because I think right. um, Zach Britton was, like, under 2,000, and Lance Lynn and all those dudes were really low. So I was like, okay, I'm probably around there. But somehow, you know, my pitch, I don't know. I was a weird pitcher, man. So <laughs> same with Heller. Yeah. Heller's weird. But he throws Get out of that. <laughs> So good for him. Yeah. <laughs> but um yeah, let's talk a little bit before we get dive deep into velocity. Um <clears throat> just how how's things going right now for you for you business wise? Uh you enjoying it? The kids enjoying it? You're seeing a lot of impact and hopefully it's you know, you, you're being successful financially with it. Absolutely. Yeah. Um you know, I just got a phone with uh so the guy who owns I don't own the facility. Um a good friend of mine, uh, Jeff Moline, owns a facility. He was drafted in the '80s at some point by the by the Twins, and he played and played a little pro ball. And uh, like our area, you know, we've had a few guys drafted here and there, but I wouldn't necessarily call us like a baseball rich environment, you know. So like we're kind of trying to change that a little bit. And like numbers were were kind of going down like pretty steadily for a little bit. Like you know, obviously like there was a height of like lacrosse, you know, back when we were in high school and stuff. Like we started losing some numbers here and there. 
And then our team, you know, our high schools, we have four high schools here in town, went from putting together a ninth grade, a 10th grade, a JV and a varsity for the high school teams. And pretty soon it was basically like all we had was JV and varsity because that's all we could fill out, you know, um, which was frustrating to see. So, you know, Jeff, the owner of the facility, put the put the roster batting cages up um, five years ago on Christmas, the day after Christmas, I believe five years. And, you know, just the, you know, when I was when he first opened it up, I went out because I was I needed a place to throw and I was about to head to spring training. So I think I might've been one of the first guys to work out there, but you know, over the last five years or so, just under five years, it's been amazing to see how many kids have come out and taken advantage of, you know, a, the facility and B, you know, the, the many guys that have come through there that have a, a ton of knowledge. And, you know, I, I probably did it for two or three years, just giving lessons and kind of working with some kids like small groups for a couple of years before I started velocity. And then um, in October, it'll be two years of velocity. And it's just been amazing. Like the support we've had from the community, the impact we're, you know, that I think we're making, you know, just in the, in the local realm here of baseball. And, you know, now starting to see some of the guys who were, you know, before I started velocity, like eighth graders, ninth graders now, you know, either freshman year in college or juniors and seniors in high school. And, you know, just see the transformation you be able to make over 18 months to, to three years, um, you know, to see the kids that are now coming into the, to the, to the program that are, 10, 11, 12, well, gosh, you know, by the time they go to college, hopefully they've got six, seven years of, of training under their belt. You know, that'll be super cool. So, yeah, it's been growing a lot faster than I ever could have imagined. You know, God is blessed and um, been faithful and um, been very fruitful to, to the, the work we've been putting in. So it's been it's been a blessing. That's what's up, man. I'm glad to hear that. I did a little, uh, you know, little instructional uh, pitching stuff uh, in my hometown, but just for a little bit, you know, I was uh, still doing my school thing, you know. I got one more semester, thank the Lord. Mm. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> yeah, one more, and I'm done. Uh, but you know, it, it's something I still want to continue, and I'm trying to figure out and navigate how I want to do that. But it's good to see you're doing it, and uh, you know, making an impact on these on these kids' lives. I know for me, when I was giving pitching lessons before, it wasn't like my business. I was just there uh, working in the off season when I was in the minor leagues, and I'm seeing you know these kids that you know I you know. I'm not taking full credit, but you know, they did throw a perfect game this year in high school. So, um, <laughs> yeah, you need, you need a pay raise for sure. <laughs> we actually had two perfect games. The one kid I don't, I didn't, I've never worked with. He's just an animal. Um, and he's going to v- division one. And if they would have went further in the tournament, he probably would have had a chance of being drafted. He, mm-hmm. his stats were ridiculous, dude. And he, yeah. I think he was topping out at 96. So in high school, so he's he's doing pretty good, and he, the one thing the difference between me and him is he knows where it's going to. He, you know, me was just out there. Hey, but, Perth, you there? Yeah, I'm there. I'm here. Oh, right, did you lose? Uh, sorry. There? Yeah, sorry. I think I lost you for a minute. You they said, got internet uh, up in uh, said, Minnesota. Well, shoot, I think so. <laughs> Dang, man. No, I'll tell you, man, that, that's what happens when you're living on this minor league paycheck. <laughs> <laughs> No, what I was saying was, uh, you know, we had this this stud uh, in my hometown now who maybe lost his chance to get drafted higher because they didn't go as far in the tournament with the crazy schedule and have these scouts having to go into college games and you know high school games. Uh, if it was a typical year, he'd probably be getting drafted now, but I'm not sure. Well, I'm hoping the best for him, but he topped out 96. He knows where it's going, so that's what he has that ahead of me. So, <laughs> oh, for sure, you yeah, me too. <laughs> Yeah, we'll we should get be playing it. him. <laughs> He's nasty though, but um, yeah, man, he. We had two perfect games this year, and I think they were the first two perfect games in our county forever. So it's crazy. That's amazing. Yeah, we had uh, one of the guys that I that I faced. I'll give him a little shout out here. Zach Carr. Um, he's a junior lefty. Yeah, he goes to John Marshall High School. Um, he threw a no hitter, but it was a five inning no hitter because um, they they ten run the team. So. Um, <laughs> Take from that what you will, I guess. Uh, but, yeah, we didn't have any seven-inning no-hitters, so I'm just going to have to cut everybody and just start new. Um, yeah. <laughs> oh, shoot. I bet they'd appreciate being cut, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. They'd probably just cut me instead. But, <laughs> but no, I mean, it's just great to see that stuff happening. And it, it for, for me, it's weird. I, I didn't realize how much time had passed from when I was giving them lessons to, you know, seeing them with facial hair and <laughs> playing baseball as a – as you know, as as young men, it's just weird. But um, all, at the same time, it's it's also a good feeling just to say like, hey, you know, I made a little small impact, no matter where it was. 
Um, but a lot of Absolutely. them are doing well hitting, and I know I did not make an impact there. So, <laughs> it's good. yeah, yeah. But uh, I just want to do a quick checkup. Uh, I've never, I've never done this with you, but it's something that I might start doing with some friends and stuff. And it's just like a, you know, where you kind of just give your yourself a, a mental grade where you're at in your mental health. And I saw this on mm-hmm. I Am Athlete with Brandon Marshall, and I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. So they always just kind of hit each other up at some uh, certain point of the day, or you know, maybe a month or so goes by and they haven't talked, and they just hit each other up and they're like, hey man, like you know, where you at and 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 your personal, your spiritual, and you know, your physical body, like where you at, like at mental wise, you know, and then they kind of give their grades, whether it's you know one to ten or. You know, I don't really want to get into that much detail, but just like, hey, you know, I'm doing good here. Uh, you know, I could be doing better here. But, you know, it seems when when we had our little interview and in our conversation that spiritual wise, you know, you're you're in a good spot. But, you know, working out and stuff for me, I'm in a bad spot. But <laughs> <laughs> me, too. I'm in that boat with you. Uh, I got you. Well, I was doing better, but then I hurt my back, giving my daughter a bath. So I'm trying to. <laughs> I'm trying to lobby. That tells you that tells you all you need to know about where you're at anyways. <laughs> I'm trying to lobby for the wife to do all time bath. <laughs> but Yeah, there you go. Uh, yeah, I hurt my back, baby. So yeah, you gotta do it. <laughs> but um, <laughs> right. but uh but no, I just I know for me, you know, I could dive deeper into the word and get some more time and prioritize for spiritual wise, but you know, I just since we're gonna be talking about mental health, I thought it was good to get a little uh I guess a barometer where you're at right now and how you're feeling. Yeah, for sure, dude. Um yeah, you know, I mean, it's, it's we kind of talked about this before, like sometimes when things are going good, like it's it's easy to be like, yeah, I'm good, bro. You yeah. know, but um, there are obviously times like just in everyday life where, gosh, you're just like, man, like this is the part of the day that I really don't like, like just doing the computer work or doing the programming or doing, you know, whatever. Um, but yeah, man, it's been it's been really good. You know, yeah. um, like you said, the spiritual aspect of my life is huge for me. Um I know that when I'm in the word and when I'm, when I'm praying and when I'm, uh, you know, talking to, um, my friends about my faith, like, you know, it, it, it definitely helps me. Like, that's kind of like the anchor, you know, around my life that, um, really helps me stay in a good, in a good spot. Um, you know, so I would say if it was like a one to we'll go one to five, a little broader, uh, I would say like I'm at a four, you know, like in a good spot, I like, can always obviously do better, but, uh, yeah, I think overall it's been very solid. Gotcha. That's good to hear. That's good to hear. I'm excited to hear that. And for me, uh, you know, it's always good for me to check in with people like that. You know, <laughs> you might make it on the list. I might start saying, hey, Mitch, what you doing, man? So, <laughs> there you go. Yeah, I need but, that. Yeah. It, I mean, everybody does. And I know when I have my accountability partners, uh, it's always, you know, kept me good where, you know, it's no bull. There's no no, you know, beating around the bush. It's like, Hey man, like what's going on? You walk with God, like you good. <laughs> and you know, you, you can't be like, well, yeah, well, I'm doing this. They'll be like, uh, sounds like you ain't doing too good. <laughs> if you're talking too much, just tell me you're good or not. So, right. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I think that's important to have. We all should have that in, in our lives. And, uh, absolutely. Um, but you know, speaking of mental health and, and all that, like, you know, we talked about that, you know, we were, you know, players, pitchers in our career that, um, you know, had all the talent in the world, <laughs> tooth on horn, toot toot. But <laughs> <laughs> you know, we weren't necessarily able to, you know, put that on full display at, at every moment. And you know, obviously, we would have loved to just been out there free, just chucking it. And but that wasn't the case for us at, at, at all the times. And you know that it sucked. But you know, obviously, the long term, I think it helped us. But I kind of want to touch on that, and and I want you to just talk about from your standpoint right now, before we dive into our careers and stuff and how we were affected, but just as your point right now, velocity baseball training for me. And I know for you, it's not just, Hey, here's mechanics. This is how you do it. You're you're trying to, you know, be a, a good example on a mental thing and kind of be there for the kid because, you know, maybe their dad or their coach doesn't really understand that, or maybe never went through it or maybe just denies that, that that can exist. So for you and for me, I know I kind of want to be like sort of like a, not a mental performance coach, but at the same time, just know that, Hey, if you're ever struggling with something, you know, I'm here, I've went through this, you know, don't feel like you're the only person in the world going through this. I mean, but I know you touched like the line you, you use is, you know, you never know what's going on with some kid. And and when you see these horror stories of these kids getting yelled at being 12 year olds by some parent, it's just, it's bad. But like, what is your take on that before I just start talking the rest of the podcast? <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, for sure, dude, like, you know, obviously like we touched on earlier, I think sometimes it's, it's hard to know like what's going on uh, outside of the gym. You know, like I have the luxury of seeing kids, 
you know, when they're in like, you know, what, I, I mean, I hope everyone thinks it's a safe place where like, you know, they're, they're having fun, they're doing stuff that they enjoy. Like, yeah, they're working their butts off and, and they're working hard, but this is a safe place for everyone to fail forward. You know, they got a supportive environment, um, their teammates, their coaches, um, you know, everything is super positive, but understanding that that's only a couple hours of their day, you know, the other 22 hours of the day, you have absolutely no insider control over that besides, you know, like social media, which would be a whole nother thing. But, um, you know, I, I, I do, I, I think I've developed a lot more empathy. And, you know, when I first started the coaching, it was like, gosh, like, why, 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 why is he like that? You know, but then, and then you start to realize, you know, there's so much more going on behind the scenes. Like kids are struggling, you know, especially during the whole shutdown, you know, like that was, that was really hard for a lot of people, including myself. And um, I think a lot of people struggled through that. And I think, you know, just developing a side of empathy and, and really understanding like, Hey, like, you know, this is only a short part of their day, you know, at the end of the day, like, you know, especially when you're talking about, well, I mean, any, at any time, but when you're talking about young kids, you know, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, you know, most of them probably aren't going to be professional all-stars, you know, in the big leagues, but hopefully they can learn how to be all-stars in, in their, in their mental health and in their daily life and just learning how to, you know, cope and, and, and just, uh, function with like the demands of daily life. You know, I think that's the beautiful thing about sports is it's, it really is kind of a metaphor for, for the rest of, you know, everything that goes on in your life is, you know, there's gonna be a tons of failure, but as long as you're learning from it and, you know, you can have a positive attitude and you're a good teammate or, you know, you're healthy in your relationships, healthy in your spiritual life, healthy um, in your thoughts, you know, that that's really, that's really what we're after. Yeah. Well, I think I couldn't say that better than what you just did. Um, I appreciate like just your, your viewpoint on that whole thing. And I know that's how I finally, that's how I kind of got started in this podcast. I appeared on uh, a podcast with the Adams board. I always mess this up, Josh, ADC. It was, it was all of them. Yeah. It was the ADC, not the Adams board, but you know, the Adams board was there. So I'm not totally wrong, but, uh, (laughs) uh, (laughs) but just and people were taken back that I was that I was just so willing to to share you know my experiences and mm-hmm. you know it's not it's not a common thing so I, I think it's important to have people like you you know impacting uh, the younger uh, kids' life especially if they love baseball you know that's when I look back on my life a lot of the positive you know interaction I've had with adults is they were my coach and they, you know I'm, at the time I'm like oh my gosh this coach but you know later in life just like with your relationship with your parents you understand that okay. This is what he meant. I understand that now. Mm-hmm. I'm glad he equipped me with that, and it, it's very helpful. So I'm kind of grateful for that, even though it was annoying at the time. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, I think that's that's a big thing. Is I think now it's it's easier. You know, and it's a little bit unfair. Like, uh, I feel like it's unfair sometimes as coaches because we're not like involved in the situation anymore. Like we we used to be, right? But now we're not in that situation. We've got to tell a guy like, hey, you know maybe, you know, coach meant this, maybe your teammate, when he said that, like, he didn't really mean, he meant it like this, you know, but it's hard because, you know, objectively it's easy to be like, well, like, why would you, you know, it's not like that. But then when you're in the situation, like that's where like the empathy comes in, you know, and and just realizing like, Hey, you know, you remember what it was like to be 16 years old and like you, you know, got sat down on the bench or, you know, you, whatever the case was, you know? So I think that's, that's a huge part of it. Yeah. No, I was, I was always on the bench if I wasn't pitching. So, um, <laughs> but uh <laughs> but no i think that's uh important and i think i've talked about this on the episode before but i want to hear your your kind of take on it because i know we were part of an organization that was trying uh to fill the needs of players that you know may had uh some issues uh you know thinking too much and not just out there being an athlete and the the, the key word is they were trying now it, i'm not saying that um because i don't think every team cares about that um but i was fortunate to be you know part of the phillies and the indians and they kind of you know took that seriously and actually had staff to to you know kind of intervene or try to help the player with that because it's the worst thing to be by yourself knowing what you're thinking and no one else gets it so um you know the the stigma do you think the stigma is changing in sports you know with all these high profile athletes you know sharing that they have you know anxiety or that they they feel this way do you think that's you know changing the stigma you know i do um i think obviously we've still got a long way to go um you know the everyday you know armchair quarterback sports fan like just you know it, it's like we just talked about like it's hard because you're not 
in that situation. You know, like it's hard to understand. I, I certainly wouldn't have the amount of like empathy that I have now had I not gone through what, you know, you and I kind of went through. Um, but yeah, I think it is, you know, I've talked to a ton of people who have been like, man, you know, like I, on a small, you know, they always think it's on a small scale. It's not when they're on like a regular, you know, a, like, I don't know, regular nine to five job, if you want to call it that yeah. or whatever. But, um, you know, Oh gosh, you know, like I used to have heart palpitations cause my, my work environment was like, not, you know, well, it, it made me very anxious or, you know, it made um, me very uncomfortable or whatever the case is. But I, I do think that, you know, as a society in general, people are starting to understand it a little bit more. Um, and from there, like if it, whether you don't have any experience with it, surely 99% of people out there know someone who has or have a close yeah. relationship with someone who has. So I think it is. I think it is. I mean, it, it's, it's awesome that we're able to hop on a podcast here and share with you know, hopefully, you know, hundreds of thousands of people at Ooh. some point, uh, about, <laughs> oh, maybe a little more, uh, less, uh, more or less. Um, but, um, you know, I think it's important that, you know, we were able to talk about it because then, you know, that's, that's the only way it really gets kind of like desensitized really, you know? Yeah. I think it's important and, uh, I'm glad it's, we're seeing a, a, a tick in the amount of people that are sharing and now they're starting to say that, okay, I don't have to keep this to myself and, you know, keep struggling with this. But now, okay, Kevin Love did this, you know, DeMar DeRozan said this. So if they're in this position and they're doing that, uh, you know, it's okay for me to, you know, if I'm a minor leaguer or a college uh, basketball player that I can, I can also admit like, hey, you know what, I'm struggling with this and get it taken care of instead of, you know, it going on and affecting your whole career, you know. So I think it's very, you know, pivotal that it's it's very popular to just, you know what, this is how I feel. It's okay. You know, even though I'm a man and men were taught to really not show their feelings or share things like this, I think yep. it's we're at a different point in our lives, in our society that it has to happen moving forward. It just has to be a part of what we do as people. There's no reason to keep stuff inside. We obviously know that it is detrimental to our health to do that. So, um, but I think it's good, but, uh, you know, let's talk about how bad, uh, we were in certain situations in our careers. <laughs> no, um, but, uh, for you, obviously I talked about, you know, getting drafted and stuff like that. I just want to quickly briefly touch on the draft experience for you because I know my situation was a lot different than most people. I mean, you were probably this highly touted, uh, you know, recruit out of high school. And for me, I had no pressure because I didn't think I was going to play pro baseball. I just quit college football and I was like, oh, I'll play pro, uh, college baseball because it's fun and I, I don't want to be a regular student. So I'll play baseball. And I just was out there throwing. And that's the greatest mind, you know, I guess state of mind you can be in. And I know people of your stature that had, you know, that were looked at and big prospects and stuff like that. It's a little bit different. You kind of have that feeling. I'm, well, I guess I'm speaking for you. You talk about your draft experience. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I mean, you, you know, I think you hit it right on the head. I think, you know, um, I, I tell people sometimes, like, I was a little bit of a late bloomer, like, you know, um, undersized until like, you know, sophomore year, and then kind of started coming into my body and throwing a lot harder in my junior and senior in high school. And, you know, started, um, you know, in, in my mind, I always thought I was gonna be a professional baseball player from the time I was really young. But, you know, looking back, it's pretty I was pretty obliv oblivious, you know, to like what it actually takes to do. Um, and, you know, as I was, you know, in high school, my senior year throwing in the mid nineties, like, you know, I knew I was gonna have an opportunity. Um, you know, there was a, there wasn't a lot of pressure for me, like other than what I put on myself, you know, um, well, that's what if I we were, if it was, yeah. if, if what's up, I was like, well, most people don't think of that as the, uh, that's the worst type of pressure is the one right. you're yeah. doing it yourself. But yeah, sorry. Go ahead. Absolutely. Yeah. Like if it was hockey, like around my area, like, oh my gosh, there have been lots of pressure, you okay. know, because like our community loves that. But, gotcha. um, baseball was, you know, it was like, I was just excited. You know, I was excited for the opportunity. I didn't, I didn't feel a lot of pressure, like a lot of stress, like moving into the draft. Um, yeah, I thought it was a pretty relaxed experience for the most part for me. Awesome. Well, that's, that's good because it can be, you know, the people I got drafted with, they were, you know, they were the Tennessee's of the world, the, the big colleges. And they were like, yeah, man, I, I you know, I thought I was going to fall to this round and all that stuff. And I right. was, I, to me, I was thinking, yeah, they were like, yeah, you'll probably get drafted in the 50th round. I'm like, okay, I'll just go back to college, whatever. And yeah. then one game just changed that whole thing. So it was just weird. Right. Right. It was weird. So my situation was good. I went from not even thinking about the draft till a month later getting drafted. So it was like, wow, this is crazy. 
Um, yeah. But I'm glad the draft experience was good for you because that could be a nightmare. And it also could be everything that is cracked up to be. For me, it wasn't. I didn't get drafted in the first round when I thought I was. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> but um, you know, for like looking back on your career, before we get, you know, fully into, you know, how we dealt with what we thought was, you know, we were the only people on the planet dealing with it. You know, were there any lessons outside of mental health that you just want to share that you're just like, man, you know, this would have been nice to know uh, before I entered pro ball? Yeah, 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 for sure. I, you know, I always, I always told guys, uh, Chad, um, I think one of the biggest things is understanding, like, what makes you special, right? Like, obviously, if you're at that level of getting drafted or playing professional sports, like, you got something going on, you know? And, and I think a huge part of that is understanding, like, hey, what is that thing? You know, and then let me build around like the nucleus of my skill set. You know, like maybe it's, man, I'm throwing a 98 mile an hour heater. Okay, well, like let's keep doing that and then we'll build around that, you know, but not, uh, well, you know, now I want to be an 88 mile an hour sinker baller or now, I, you know, I got to throw 75% sliders or, you know, now I'm a lefty special. You know, I think one of the big things is just understand like, hey, this is what I'm really good at. This is why I'm, I'm special. This is why, like, you know, I'm having the opportunity. And let's build around that. But, you know, don't, don't leave, don't leave what you're strong at to be trying to be a little bit better at what you're weak at. And then pretty soon you're weak at everything. So that's basically what happened to me, but it wasn't self-imposed. So I don't want to point fingers at the Phillies, but <laughs> um, <laughs> it was, they, you know, I know, I know for me coming in, I threw hard. Um, and to me, I didn't know I was throwing a sinker. That's just how I gripped the ball. And, that's just it moved like it did and i was like well it stinks because it's not straight it's hard for me to control i wasn't <laughs> i wasn't looking at it like hey this could be a deadly pitch for you just try to throw it down the middle and everyone will miss <laughs> but with the, <laughs> with the phillies they were like you know hey we're gonna learn for you to backspin the ball throw a four seam fastball and you know this is what we think will you know and i know they've obviously they know more than i did so i was like okay let's do this and they kind of scrapped my sinker for a while just because you know well, to be honest, whenever I got a guy on first and, you know, I was in a jam, the sinker came out, so I get a double play. But <laughs> but for me, it was just, I didn't think anything of it. Like, you know, hey, I throw a good sinker. That's hard. Let's just do that. Uh, for me, right. it was, okay, you know, I, yeah, I'm, four seams, they usually go they usually go faster, so I'll throw harder. And and they just, I, I'm assuming in their mind, this is great for Percy. It, it didn't work out that way. But then when I went to the Indians, the Indians just like, hey, do what you were doing at when you're at your most comfortable state. So I went back to throwing the sinker and then I faced the, the Reading fills in double a with Akron and just had a great outing was throwing 90% sinkers and would mix in a slider or curveball. And then the pitching coach there in his defense, never ta uh, coached me. He was a low, lower levels than I was. He said, dude, what was that fastball you were throwing today? I'm like uh, the pitch you guys didn't want me to throw. But, <laughs> But, uh, you know, it was just, it, it's something that, you know, a lot of us athletes struggle with. You, you go to a certain place, they might want a cookie cutter, you do this. It, it's hard to deal with, but at the same token, do your strengths. Those are, those are the things you want to work on. You know, right. um, the one thing Phillies did give me was comfortability with a, is that a word? Comfortability. They made me comfortable throwing changeups <laughs> and they made me throw 12 to 16 a game. As a, sure. as a starter and next thing you know that became one of my better pitches so there's a thin line between that but uh right, you, know, you right. have to decide for sure. yourself so yeah absolutely i think there's there's obviously like work within the confines of of like what your skill set is you know but don't like try and reinvent yourself because that's what that's what i did yeah yeah we both we both did that and there, <laughs> i know there's a clip of me on youtube when i'm throwing for reading and it's it's a good change up but i look like i'm playing catch with my son i'm like what was i <laughs> doing and then you see the clip from me playing in cleveland and i'm like ah and i'm like dude yeah. if i would have did that four years earlier but you know we learned yeah. um <laughs> now for for i think the first year i got i met you it was 2015 you know i was heated that i was going to i don't even want to say this lynchburg first of all i'm black and they're saying <laughs> lynchburg i'm like oh my god and it was single A and I'm 26. I'm like, dude, these 20, these 19, 20, 20 run year olds are going to be like, who's this old fart coming to our team? <laughs> but little did I know that, you know, there was some already some, you know, well-developed, uh, you know, people on that team. It wasn't a whole bunch of young cats. I mean, you were young, but you weren't like, you didn't act young. So, sure. it was, and I, and I think you were, you, who are my roommates? You and Heller? Is that it? 
Mm -hmm. So yep, uh, thank you for so. allowing me to come into your, your place, you know, and sleep. But uh, for sure, we yeah, we put up with all your farts. <laughs> hey, my audience doesn't you can, really fart. No, <laughs> I was gonna say you can edit that out if you don't want that in there. But no, you seemed very comfortable farting in front of me, so hopefully your audience. Is, yeah, they is yeah they don't hear the pre-show farts. So um. <laughs> No, but yeah, we'll definitely leave that in there. They know people who watch this, they, they know what I do on a regular basis. Oh, perfect. But, um, perfect. <laughs> but just going there, it was, it was a rude awakening. You know, we had, we had, you know, mature baseball players and, you know, blackjack players. And, uh, it was, it was just <laughs> <A> blackjack <laughs> huge. Yeah. It was, it was a good experience for me and I pitched well and I got to know and make a lot of new friends. And, um, it was a great experience. You know, you DJ Brown, Haas, you know, Heller, uh, Grant Sides, there's a lot of uh, Robbie. It, it was just, it was a good, you know, other than Mike Pappy, you know, trying to come at me in the showers, you know, I almost had to, lay, <laughs> almost had to lay him down, but no, uh, <laughs> uh, but I don't like, know about that. I don't think I want to know about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was telling me to, to move away from his shower because that was his. Oh, but anyways, just, just flex a little bit. Yeah. yeah, he was trying to flex, but uh, I forget. Someone was like, "Shut up, Mike or Pappy." I was like, "Oh, okay, we're, we're good, we're good." But no, uh, no, shout out to Pappy, dude. I love Pappy, but um, uh, no, it was it was just a good experience, and I know for me it was it was weird. Uh, but uh, for for someone like you, um, where you like, woo, I'm at I'm at high A, baby, and I don't know how you old at, how old you were at the time. Were you like twenty or twenty one, or what were you? Well, six I years 21. ago, 21. Yeah, I think I was 21. For me, when I got to high A, I skipped levels and I got to high A. For me, I was like, oh my God, these guys are good. You know, okay. I got to be on, I got to be the best pitcher ever. And, you know, that added pressure. So what, what were you thinking when you were in, in, in high A at that at that age, I guess? You know, it's, it's like a running joke with my friends because my friends all loved baseball. And like every year when I would get moved up, my first year I was terrible. <laughs> Because I had like this, uh, and it was 100% like mental, you know, yeah. like it was like, oh man, I've got to be this, you know, like I've got to be like, these guys are like, there's like a 10% like increase in the, whatever, in the curve, you know? And then you're just like the second year, I was just more comfortable, yeah. you know? And, and it happened every year, like at every level, rookie ball, uh, low A, high A, all the way up to double A, you know? And it's like second year, you're just like, and like, why can't I just be like this all the time? Yeah, hitters suck. We just got to know. Yeah, <laughs> it's hard just to get them out. It's just get them out. <laughs> it's hard to hit, man. Uh, one right. little, one little tidbit I want to drop just for I don't know if I've shared this before, but guys, if you're if you're ever having confidence troubles throwing pitches, you know, to hitters and thinking that they're going to hit the ball really hard, just watch BP. Pitch the pitch is being just put in there perfectly, and count how many hits they get. Your confidence will rise. So, um, uh, before you know. People know my struggles and I've shared them a lot. Um, but, you know, I think I think we've talked about, you know, mental health and how important it is uh, that I think I'm, I'm comfortable moving on to, to the positives uh, of, you know, having people in your corner when you're going through these things. So and I think we developed a good friendship. Obviously, we're over here joking and, and, you know, we have a good time whenever we talk, even though I don't know last time we talked and then we're just on here, you know, just, you know, throwing punches and it's fun. <laughs> uh, friendships made in baseball, man. Cause we, obviously when you're playing baseball, you see, you know, your teammates and your coaches and trainers and way more than your family. Um, lucky for you, Lauren was able to travel and, and be with you, but I know there was some, probably some times where you had the distance for me, I had distance the whole time. So it was a struggle, but, uh, just talk about the friendships you, you made in baseball and the people you still contact. Yeah, dude. Like you said, <clears throat> I think there's such a, there's such a small like population that can kind of, um, identify with like what, what the lifestyle is like, you know, like so much time away from your family and, you know, especially for, you know, you talk, you might talk about like the 17, 18 year old high school kids from America, but then you've literally got kids from Latin America, the Czech Republic, uh, maybe just the one from Czech Republic that we know, Martin, <laughs> shout out Martin Zarenka. Um, uh, you know, Australia, Taiwan, uh, Puerto Rico, like the list goes on and on, you know? And like, can you imagine, like the same thing that, you know, I went through when I was 18, you went through when you're 21, 22, like yep. first couple of years in pro ball, like you're still learning how to be a man. You know, like I was nowhere close to be knowing how to be a man, you know, when I was, you know, 17, 18, 19 years old, um, you know, and there's just such a small like population that can identify with what that is. And, you know, I think that there's so much like nonverbal communication, you know, like there was times where, you know, you know, we're going to talk about not being able to know what someone's going through until you, you know, but there's just so much, you know, that you can kind of insinuate and like everyone's going through the same thing. And, you know, like 
uh, Levon Washington always say, like, don't tell me about the rough waters because everybody's got them. You know, like yeah. everybody knows that there's so many struggles that, you know, we're going through, whether it's, you know, family stuff, or whether you're over, you know, your last 20 at bats, whether you can't throw a strike or whatever the case is. Like, yeah. you know, it, the, 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 the relationships that we build are like just priceless. Yeah. Yeah. And the one thing I think it's big to realize, even though it's a kid's game and that's what, you know, when someone's struggling, that's like the first thing they say, Hey man, you know, it's kid's game, man. Have fun. You know? And, uh, I hate when they say that. I know, cause, <laughs> Yeah, when you were 12, it's about having fun. But right. at the business part now, I have to perform to put food on the table for my family. So it's not, right, <laughs> it's not right, have fun, right, you know. Right. But um, yeah. <laughs> for the thing I think people must realize is baseball is a game, in my opinion. Now, I'm, I played football and I love basketball. I'm just not that very good at basketball. But baseball for me, just it just breeds men because you, you have to deal with so much failure, um, especially as a hitter. You know, the best are ones that, you know, are failing 70% of the time. You, you name a sport or just a career where you're like, oh, you know, well, I guess sales. I guess sales, you throw stuff at the wall. And if you, Weatherman, if you, yeah. yeah. If, you can be, if you're converting 30% of the time, you're probably pretty wealthy. But in most times in life, if you're if you're failing 70% of the time, you're, you're not doing really well. So baseball, you know, it teaches you at a young age that, hey, you know, failure is okay. Uh, I just got to learn from it. And, you know, for me, I think that was an important uh, thing I didn't really look at because I had played football. And for me, you know, I'm completing about 67% of my passes. And, you know, you, very seldom do you not gain a yard in football. So like, for me, I'm just like, oh, yeah, like, cool. You know, I succeed. This is great. But baseball is just it's a different animal. Uh just quickly before, because I want to get into, you know, I want you to touch a little bit on your family and, and just your goals moving forward for velocity. And then, and then I'll let you uh, get back to your family since we're talking about them, but just touch yeah, no. yeah, real quick uh, about what you, how you think negatives have affected you and did it make you a better person? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I think anytime that you're going through a struggle, there's always something to be gained from the struggle. Like I read something, you know, actually I think it was my pastor was talking about like, instead of getting, trying to like struggle your way, like out of the struggle, like don't be in a rush to like, just do anything and everything you can to get out of the struggle. It's like, Hey, what, what am I, what, what is this season in my life for? Right. Like, what am I supposed to take away from this? You know, and whether you're a spiritual person or not, I think, you know, you can, you can look at those situations and like, Hey, like, surely there is something to be gained from like this pain that I'm going through, you know? And, and that could be, you know, that could be like a mechanical thing, like simple, like, you know, a pitching thing, like, Hey, like Scotty Erickson say, bend your back, dude. Um, or, um, you know, it could just be like a mental or like emotional, you know, life thing. Like, yeah. Hey, you know, maybe I'm putting way too much emphasis and I'm, I'm letting way too much ride on how my, my one start a week goes or my one start every five days goes. Yeah. And, you know, I think that's a huge part of it is like, Hey, maybe if we take a second to stop trying to like be in a rush to like not acknowledge or like cover up the fact that we're struggling, like what, what, what am I supposed to take from this situation? Yeah. Yeah, well, I think it's a thing we don't like to do because it hurts our ego that, hey, I'm struggling. Oh, 100%. But, <laughs> but um, so for you, obviously, you've got a beautiful wife, beautiful daughter. Mm -hmm. Yep, um, Raleigh. Yes. So, oh, yeah, yeah, Raleigh. So forward, like, you know, being a man and a father and a husband, you know, obviously, that's very important. Uh, but that's got to be something that you're, you obviously probably still miss baseball and would love to be, you know, on the mound. But the same token, there's got to be a portion of you like, all right, you know, I'm, I'm around my daughter. You know, I get to be here for Lauren. It, it just feels right and feels good. I mean, am I am I am I out of out of line by saying that? Because for me, no. is it just saying that you know I, I'm not competitive and I, and I didn't like sucking, so now I'm good being my family? Or is that just, <laughs> <laughs> is that just how you feel as well? No, 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 no. You know, I think like you know, I look back and surely. I mean, I would be hard pressed to say I don't have any regrets. Um, <laughs> but uh, I think that, you know, at the end of the day, I look at it, I'm like, hey, man, I gave everything that I had at that moment. Yeah. You know, like, could I have been better? Of course I could have. But yeah. I get like it was for not not for a lack of effort that I didn't pitch in the big leagues. And one other thing, like real quick, um, that just kind of like I think is a little frustrating is like, hey, like, you know, well, like, that's OK. Like you failed in your, in your baseball career. But, you know, like there's more, you know, and you're like. Bro, I didn't fail. Like, <laughs> yeah. I, what do you mean? Like, because I didn't make the big leagues, like I failed. Like, I didn't, uh, I, that's not a failure. No. You know, like 
I'm taking what I learned and, you know, I think everyone can take what they learn in pro ball, apply it to the rest of your life. And like, if you're applying it properly, like you'll be a better person in every aspect of your life from, from that experience, you know? So I look at it and like, or, you know, and not, not even that people have said that to me, but just the fact that like, if anyone, if anyone out there thinks like, Hey, you know, I didn't make it as a, (laughs) as a big league all-star, like that's not a failure. Like you're, that's just an experience that you take with you. Um, but yeah, I mean, sorry. Just, I just, to, just to inter- no, just to, just to intervene there. Like, if you just put it in a normal workplace, you know, because what point oh 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 one percent or whatever make it as a a long career in the big leagues. So if you just think about that, like, okay, I was drafted. I I was the at one point one of the best. You know, I don't know, however many baseball players in the world there is. I was one of the best, and I was the elite. So if you put that in like a normal, like just a normal atmosphere in the in the business world you would be very successful. No, I'm not the CEO of the company and I'm not a billionaire, but I was, you know, I'm elite and I'm in top of my field. Like I'm good. (laughs) Absolutely. But people don't look at it like that. But I love that you said that people here around, I will give my uh, community credit. They always, cause I'm the one that kind of saying, Oh, well, you know, you know, I didn't, you know, I would have loved to have a longer career, you know? Um, and I would love to hit a hundred mile an hour so I can call this show a hundred mile an hour with Percy Garner. But, uh, <laughs> but, uh, it's something that, you know, they've all said, Hey, you know what? I can't say that I've done what you've done. Majority of people in this world can't say that they play for the Cleveland Indians. Majority of the people in this world say they, they can't, they didn't get drafted to play professional sports. So, and they kind of remind me like, okay, well, you know, I should be proud of what I accomplished. And, and take what I've learned and just like you said, apply it to to my new venture or the, the second quarter of my life, uh, as you would say, you know, if God, God wants me to live that long. But um, but yeah, I'm glad you said that. But that's just hilarious also, though, because, <laughs> you know, there's people that, <laughs> even if they might say it to your face, oh, you did good. And they're like, oh, <laughs> it was a good try. <laughs> yeah, it's a good try. You know, no Corey Kluber, but, you know, good try. <laughs> But uh, for you now, and you're, you're, you're obviously loving the family life and you're loving, you know, making an impact on these kids. What's your goals for velocity? Or do you even think that far? You're just saying, hey, you know what, today I want to, you know, get better and help these kids get better. Yeah. You know, like when I first started, um, the whole idea was I, at the time I was still trying to play. I was a free agent for a couple of years and I was still trying to get back into it. Um, and this job, um, which turned into a, hopefully a career, um, just gave me an opportunity to train around my schedule, you know, so. Um, I had a job, you know, in a department store as a salesman and, you know, it was, it was cool. Like I loved it, but at the same time, I felt like, you know what, like this game has given me so much. Um, it'd be a shame not to like pour back into the community with what the opportunities that God has given me. So, you know, um, at the time, you know, it was basically, I'd say 75%. Um, I just want to have a job where I can make some money, work when I want to, and then, you know, have time to train. And the other 25% was, you know, I really am passionate about the game and especially in this area. And let me, you know, kind of grow the game. And and that really it's, it's kind of flipped up now, you know, where it's pretty much all all about growing the game and like growing kids passion for competition and baseball in this area. And, you know, obviously like we had touched on just hopefully making, you know, better young men and women through, through this, this, this gift that we have of of the game. Um, So, yeah, like that's, that's, that's my only goal really. And, you know, the financial aspect is, you know, obviously as any business person, you know, I want to be as, as successful as I can be. Um, what that success looks like to me though, is, is, you know, not all financial. It's, it's obviously a huge part of, um, you know, just pouring into the youth. Yep. Awesome. Well, that's good to hear, man. I'm excited to see what velocity does in the next coming future. And I also want to make sure that, you know, it's something I'm going to make it a point just to, you know, hit you up and just to say, that's my new year's resolution, by the way, every year. And I fail. Um, but, uh, my goal is to, you know, send text. Now I just talked to Siri, even though Siri's she's average at best. Uh, <laughs> I try to, she, you know, <laughs> she never gives me time to, uh, to finish what I want to say before she's like ready to send. I'm like, no, that's why I no. <laughs> I will say Google's better at that. But anyways, uh, I appreciate you coming hashtag by the show. Android. You what? Said hashtag Android. Yes. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> Even though I might be leaning, to, I got an iPad here and I might be leaning to an iPhone just because of the Apple watch. I have two phones right now. Not a flex. I, it's, <laughs> <laughs> I might be getting rid of my, I'm trying to go in one phone. Um, yeah. but anyways, 
I appreciate you coming by the show, Mitch. It's good to see you, man. <laughs> good to see you. And, uh, you know, tell Lauren, um, you know, and your parents. I obviously haven't seen them in years. So tell everyone I said what's up. And, uh, man, I appreciate you coming through and sharing. Uh, you know, if one of my guests didn't was mad that I didn't let them say bye. So if there's, is there anything you want to, I guess, end this with? <laughs> or are you feel good? Hopefully, no. <laughs> um, my son yeah, says no, that all I just the appreciate time. you letting me come on here and, and kind of pour my heart out as far as, you know, what, what velocity is about and, you know, just some of my experience with pro ball and everything. Uh, I think just the overlying thing is, man, like, like you said, just, um, you know, our, our conversation was pretty much dominated by like the mental health aspect and, and, you know, just being able to have someone like keep you accountable, you know, like you had said, you reach out to me and be like, Hey man, like how, how's everything going? Like, how you, how you doing? Not just like, Hey man, how's it going? Good. Yeah, it's but like, you don't no, really like, mean anything by hey, it. How, <laughs> yeah, how are you? How are you doing with your with your life, your thoughts, your faith, all that stuff? Um, you know, I think it's a huge part that more people need to engage in. Um, it's just, hey, like, how can how can I be better in this aspect? You know, I know you touched on some guys like uh, um, just being more proactive about their mental health. I think that's a huge part of it, and not just in baseball, not just in sports, but just in life in general. Yeah. Well, you heard it here, folks. No, I'm joking. Uh- <laughs> <laughs> hey man, uh, oh. continue being you. Uh, impact those kids' lives, man. And uh, you know, God willing, velocity will be uh, whatever you want it to be. And I'm looking forward to seeing what you guys do. But I forgot to. Dang it! You know what I forgot to do? All you ninja watchers that ain't subscribed to this channel and just watched for the content and then dip, make sure you hit the big old red button that says subscribe. Hit the thumbs up, please. Josh, there's probably a logo at the beginning or a little graphic you did since I always drop the ball. Uh, but, you know, it'll help us a lot if you like and subscribe, guys. You know, at first I used to feel awkward saying that, but now I'm telling you to do it or I will come see you. So, <laughs> 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 but no, I appreciate everybody. Everybody coming by the show. Um, you, you see us uh, next Tuesday. Thank you to our sponsors, Peter and Plumbing. Eating. Love all you guys. And uh, thank you for making this positive as possible. Thank you, Josh, for everything you do for me. And uh, I'll see you guys later. Peace.